Futures point to a lower open following yesterday's late day slide and weaker news out of China fueling concerns for slower growth. Softer than expected German PMI also has Europe trading in the red. I'm Taylor Schrantz and the morning call starts right now. Good morning, I'm Scott Redler, Chief Strategic Officer of T3Live.com. And I'm Jill Malandrina with The Street, and together we bring you the morning call. Scott, we see the futures under some pressure this morning with economic data out of Germany and China. It seems like they're continuing the sell-off that we saw late in the day yesterday. Mm -hmm. In the beginning of the day, you saw some action, you saw some momentum names start to break higher. Everyone was getting a little bit giddy, but then midday, the bank started to sell off a little bit. A lot of the momentum names started to pull off the highs. So it gave you a few different caution signals to clean up some loose longs and maybe put some extra hedges on thinking that, you know, we might be just a little bit ready for some kind of downside action. Right. Well, it's really interesting because Dow closed lower, S&P closed lower, the Nasdaq a tiny bit higher. But today we have a lot to look, not in terms of earnings, but economic data. We have jobless claims, the housing price index, and those names have really, really been in play. And we also have uh, leading indicators we're going to review as well. So let's take a look at our trading plan before. Yeah. So if uh, let's see if the claims could lift the futures off the lows or mm -hmm. any of the sectors. So if we look at the sectors, when we go first to the S&P. You will see here that the move that we've had since October, obviously everyone keeps ranting and raving. Mm -hmm has been huge you know really big tested almost right around here but then we went again and recently we've been developing an upper level floor and this is what I've been trading against this has been the point of reference you want to take a really close look here there it is so you could see it right now we're opening right around the 10 day moving averages right around this floor this floor in the spiders is about 139.40 to 139.70 in the first 30 to 60 minutes we need to see if we could reclaim this floor if the banks could go green if some tech can go green otherwise we might be on the road down to the 20 day and to retest this prior breakout which is normal and constructive in right. a bullish tape and that stands about 138.20 on the spiders. Well I would expect that the jobless claims will continue that positive trend. I mean they've just been continuously constructively uh, looking better which is a great over which is a great sign overall for the economy. We also see some improving data as well. We're going to jump into the sectors and review the restaurant names. We haven't looked at those in a while. Kicking it off with Buffalo Wild Wings. This has had a fantastic move this year. Yeah, this name gapped up and it's been trending higher. I see a small pattern that I want to watch closely in BWLD. If you take a quick look here, I haven't really looked at the name recently, but overall it's acting well. Here's your gap up. It's been like pretty much really choppy and trending. Right here's your trend line as long as it stays above this level here, which is about 85.50. I think it can continue higher. Use this as your trade or pivot to trade against. And you know, this group's been pretty hot. So if it starts to clear this area of about 91.77, it can continue. But just watch this trend line because if this were to break, you're going to see a retest of this gap and this moving average around 80 bucks. Moving along to Starbucks, they announced yesterday that they're going to continue to sell Green Mountain Coffee. We had a great play with this about three weeks ago with the options profits play with our shooter trade, Scott, buying some straight calls. We did really well with this one. Can it continue that momentum? I used to love shooters in college and I love shooters <laughs> in the market and that was a great call by you guys on the team. So at this particular point, I don't want to see you chase Starbucks. If you look at the chart right here, you will see there's a time and a place. This is when it ignited this wow. potent bar, just engulfed this entire channel. This was your entry or maybe here, then it flagged. We talked about this flag and now it's just extending higher. So you always trim into strength, you never chase strength. I'd like to see perhaps if we do correct, maybe we get a, a move back to retest this gap. That would be your entry in Starbucks, but obviously this small little ascending channel will have to break first to the downside, which I'm not saying is going to happen, but at this particular point, if you're not in Starbucks, I don't want to see you initiated up here. Moving along to McDonald's, that's also sort of the same name where like Starbucks keeps hitting 52 week highs, more highs, more highs. We've seen a little bit of consolidation here and they just announced their CEO is retiring yesterday. Well, McDonald's at this point, it has changed that trend right. somewhat. You had a wedge type pattern. We talked about it before the European news, and then we gapped lower. McDonald's is a little concerning right now and could give us clues whether we correct a bit more. And I know over time, McDonald's always seems to go back higher. But short term, you look at the pattern here, you will see that this wedge type pattern right here was a gap down to the downside on that news. So it then tried to put in a lower pivot. It traded up. It never filled the entire gap here. So if you look here, this just you know is still in control. So you have this lower channel here where I think some traders, if it starts to get below this 96, I think they're going to be shorting it for what could be a move to test the gap that we have all the way back from last December. So at this particular point, if McDonald's starts to break this area, I think guys are going to be more shorting this versus buying it because of the relative weakness there short term. Let's wrap up the restaurant group with Darden, ticker DRI. This name reports on March 23rd, which is this Friday, and the stock tends to surprise during earnings. 
Okay, so with my rules, I don't take it into earnings. So if you're an investor, just know where it came from and what it's looking for in order to see the reaction. If you look at uh, Darden here, it's been trending really nicely. If you want to draw a trend all the way from 2012, it's been hugging it and following it. It's above the 10 day. You, know, you do have this small little area right here and it's near the highest. So these earnings are going to have to be good. If you're in a tier two or tier three, I'd get to a tier one. You know, if you're a trader, you know, if it starts to get above this 53 after the earnings, you could see some more upside. But as far as uh, right here, I think it's hard to enter before earnings unless you're a long-term investor. Okay, we're going to jump into a quick commercial. When we come back, we dive into the trenches. Hi, I'm Sean Hendelman, CEO of T3 Live, where we train, coach, and mentor traders in order to help you put your money to work with confidence. The T3 Live approach is a blueprint for you to recognize, adapt, and ultimately take advantage of different market conditions. To begin your training with T3 Live, we would like to offer you the opportunity to enroll in our free 30-day online home study course. Fill in your name and email address, and I'll see you on the other side. Welcome back to The Morning Call. We jump into the trenches and check the temperature of the healthcare sector, kicking it off with Pfizer. Pfizer and Bristol-Myers, BMY, they're expecting an FDA response on March 28th regarding its stroke drug. All right, well, if that comes in positive, it looks like it's in a, a bit of accumulation pattern here. If you look at the chart, you will see that you have almost a, a, a cup and handle at the highs here, where you have this cupping formation that came back up to the highs, couldn't get through the prior resistance. It's now starting to flag here. It's been very, very choppy in this flag. So I do think they're going to need some type of catalyst in order to break it above. If that news is good and it breaks above 22, I think that will be your catalyst for Pfizer. I think you have to really be a believer in Pfizer as an investor, as a trader. There's not much opportunity because these days just don't produce big mm -hmm. ranges which traders need to see. So as an investor, perhaps be in there if you could take the risk of some type of announcement. And if it's good, it does look like it's setting up for upside. Let's take a look at a new name for our traders, Abbott, ABT. This one's had a real nice run. It's the third top holding in Stephanie and Jim's portfolio. Well, they did a good job here because this one has been running. And it, at this particular point, it's a, it's a bit extended. So I, I'm wondering if they actually are trimming some. And if you look here at the chart, you will see there's been a time and a place for this. When this triggered above this like 57 and a half, that, that was your entry. And as a trader, you could actually made money here. And it's been a beeline all the way to these highs here. Now you have a, a flag type pattern here. And traders would probably watch this too. If this can get above 60, 55, I think you get a continuation trade. But a continuation trade after such a big move from that breakout area, I would just be a bit cautious. I think almost we take a bit of a longer term approach. So I want to see where the resistance is on the weekly. You know, actually, it's already exceeding it. So this has been one strong stock. Mm -hmm. They did a good job picking this one yeah, out. They did a really good one. Uh, we're going to move along to Humana. Susquehanna hosted a management day with them yesterday, reiterating their positive uh, bias on this name. All right, so let me take a look at Humana because I don't really trade this one often either. If you look here at the chart, to me, this doesn't look so good. <laughs> to me, if you actually even look at this, it almost looks like a, a head and shoulders top where this is your left shoulder, here's your head, okay, here is your right shoulder and it's below the moving averages, I would say that something doesn't look so good here. And if this were to break below this 85, you can get a move down to at least test this gap and that comes in around 80. At this point, something's saying relative weakness here. I don't know the name well, but technically I don't think it looks good at all. Well, it could be interesting for a short term. Short play, we're going to look at Aetna. There's been some real interesting cheap volatility plays. We see some vol buying going into the summer months. Okay, well, this stock looks poised. If you, if you like the name, it's in one of those consolidation areas where it's not really sexy for a trader, but it could be on your watch list. If you look here, you will see what I'm talking about. Stock gave you a, a decent trade when it broke above this last resistance here. Um, it, it's been trending higher ever since the low. So you could say that, you know, you could buy the dips here and it's been working really well. And now you have this nice wedge type of flag pattern going sideways. So if you want to be in something and wait for it to happen, this is your accumulation portion of it. It's going to really have to start getting above about 47, 47.20 for traders to have an interest. So if you want to be in a tier one and you believe in the story, be in tier one. You know, if you if it starts to break this uptrend, which it hasn't, that's your sell signal that uh, you could see some more corrective type action. So watch this inside range here. And uh, if you see some volume above 47, it could be good for a trade there. Let's wrap it up with VVUS. The biotech names have <laughs> really been in play lately. March 28th seems to be a real big name, whether you're pharma, large cap, biotech. VVUS and some of its peers, there's another FDA advisory committee coming out with, with some comments on drugs that they're reviewing. This is actually something that I've been watching as a trader. I know mm -hmm. Sperling's been watching you know you had that huge gap up it traded well and now it's been in wait and see mode and unfortunately in wait and see mode there's huge risk 
question is, do you want to take, I would say take options versus stock into this because, you know, th this thing can be painful if it doesn't get approval, but if it gets approval, it could reward you. So you have to know your risk here. And if you look at the chart, it obviously looks very volatile. Here is your huge gap up, gave you a, a nice little move. It didn't even test that gap waiting for it. So some people believe in this. Shorts are still trapped. So if this news is good, okay, and it opens up above 26, you could see a, a big time race here. But unfortunately, like I said, it's gonna be based on that approval. So if I were you and you have you know limited risk, I would take some kind of option strategy going into the news because if you buy this stock and they don't get it, this gap gets filled, you're in the doghouse. If uh, you know if you're long it and it works, um, it's like flipping a coin. So for me, right. I don't flip coins, so I would just know your risk is your premium paid. And you probably even have a better strategy if you talk to Jill, she could you know play around with we'll those premiums we'll for you. We'll have to take a look at that on the Options Profits website. But let's move along to quick hits for some quick cash. Scott, you've been all over LinkedIn on the Twitter feed. Yeah, LinkedIn's been good. and But yesterday was a little tricky. That's what shows you sometimes mm -hmm. good stocks, bad setups. I was looking for LinkedIn. I was buying it, holding it. I wanted to trade it through 94.95 for a nice cash flow breakout. Instead, Goldman Sachs comes out with the buy recommendation, gaps it up, goes to 98, hits 101, comes back to 98. So if you bought it intraday, you were upset. So it goes right. to show you that sometimes, you know, stocks could be up seven dollars and people are like, oh, what a great day. But it wasn't a great day trading. Right. It. If you couldn't get in, of course. So if you look here at the chart, you had to own it overnight in order to make money. Thank goodness I had some overnight because I was trading this thing. You know, here's a chart pattern. Here is this big time resistance that we gapped above and we but we closed on our lows. So what I'm going to look at today is I'm long some. I'm going to use this 97 as a pivot, this, you know, the low from yesterday. It's going to probably open down with the futures. If it starts to turn up and trades through 97, I'll add to it. Let's hope you know this. if they do test this 95 area, it holds, and that would be your area to buy some back if you do believe that at some particular point, Goldman says 130, you know, it's going to take out yesterday's high of about 101 and change. Moving along to Apple. Now, these are two words that we have not said about this name in a very long time. Closed week <laughs> <laughs> and that and thank goodness it did that because it made traders a little uneasy to be you know maybe tier two tier three overnight i know the weakness and the pullback in the momentum names especially apple gave me some cause for concern so i sold some longs and i also took some q short with my spider short so on this down open i'm not really that concerned or getting hurt so if you saw this in apple yesterday it could have helped you and i think i tweeted about it also saying possible push through failure on Apple. So I want to show you what that means. That means it trades through the prior high here of um, 606.90, squeezes some shorts, and then comes back below. That's a small little sell signal. Uh, with this stock, it doesn't really add to much, and it wasn't that potent yesterday. But I would say now, with some weakness, see if it could hold this area right here, which is about 591. And then the 10-day, which it held on the last few times that we came in right here, you know, isn't all the, it's all the way down to this gap, which is around 577. So just be careful. I think we'll know what type of retracement or pulling we have based on whether Apple holds this area or comes in to test this area. So definitely watch it. And lately it's been a little bit tricky to trade, but it's definitely a good barometer. Right. It's just amazing that this stock is up 49% for the year. It's just, it just, it just doesn't stop. Anyway, moving along to Baidu. This one broke above a key resistance level yesterday. Well, this was another example of something that was up on the day, but off the high. So it's a little bit frustrating. You know, it, it, right now, I wouldn't say game over, but all the Chinese data coming out and some of the concerns about their slowdown every time it emotionally hits some of the Chinese names. So today, Baidu will be down. You know, if it doesn't uh, hold, I would say 138.50 to 139, I'm probably going to get stopped out of my trailer. And then I, I might not trade this again for a while. But if you look here, yesterday, earlier on, it was a, it was a, a nice little trade. You know, this was the line that we were watching. I talked about it with Stephanie. I said, if it could start breaking this downtrend, it can get going. You know, so the one trend that broke that, that actually paid you was right here. So I bought it early in the morning around 139.20, added through 140, sold some above 142, and then it closed relatively weak around 140.60. So I would say I'd like to see this hold at least the 138.50. So I'll try and buy a little of the weakness in Baidu, but if it doesn't show any relative strength, I'll probably get out of the way because this stock is just proving that it's just too choppy for, for traders. Right. Well, we also have a lot of the headline risk as well. With uh, Over the weekend, we had uh, with the journal. We also had it in Bloomberg where we're seeing a lot of Chinese companies move away from U.S. listings. There's a lot of transparency over there. So we'll probably see a lot of choppiness in those names. Let's move along to SanDisk, S-N-D-K. That's one that you haven't looked at in a while. No, which just goes to show you how you can try and time these things. Last quarter, I took some calls into the report. It looked like it was set up to me for higher prices, and the report wasn't great. So it kind of went into the penalty box. It went off my A list to my B or C list. And then yesterday, guys, like, oh, look at the chart pattern in Sandisk. It looks pretty set up. So if you look at the chart here, 
first things first, you know, this is when it was set up and it seemed as if it was ready after a nice four month base to go into highs, but the report was soft. Came in, tested support, and it was kind of an under accumulation once again, made a little bit of a move. And now um, after uh, a few more months and another quarter behind it, perhaps I thought it was ready. So yesterday I bought some around 50, 80, traded around it. I'm still long tier one. It, you know, I would like to see today it hold just say the 50, 70. This is a candidate to buy it to go from negative to positive. It was strong yesterday. And then you have the old highs here. So if the market stays in check or in the same trend, this could be a candidate to make new 52 week highs because if you look here on the weekly chart, you know, it's still set up really nicely and it looks like it's ready to go. It's just going to probably need uh, another earnings report to be the catalyst because the last one was a bit disappointing. Let's round it off with TBT. We might look to buy some dips here. And you know what, Scott? You might get that chance because a lot of the desks I spoke to yesterday saw some buying with the treasuries as some of those yields have come in a bit. Yeah, well, well, this one I've been trailing for a week and I've use, been using my tier system, tier one, tier two, it all depends. And I've been trailing it with a little less than a tier one because we went to, one of my objectives were, were about 21 and a half, 22. So if you look at the TBT at the chart here, you'll see, let me get this out of the way. You will see that um, this is when you got long, right? This is when it closed above the recent resistance. And it was a nice trade. When as high as 21, what is that? That's about 21.55, uh, which was the lower end of the, the zone, which was 21 to 22. So selling some there made sense. Yesterday, it closed in the lows below this range. So some guys went flat. I decided to stay with it. So I'm going to stay with it, and I'm going to see if I could buy some back right around 2045, okay, to about 2040. If this entire gap gets filled, I think this whole trade and the whole strategy comes in jeopardy. I'd like to see a portion of this hold to show some strength in this move in the sell off in bonds and that whole new sell bonds buy stocks. But as of right now, my point of reference here for the TBT is 2035. You know, it might dance around that area, but it shouldn't get too much lower. If it fills that gap, right. then it was just a trade and I probably stayed too long. So just before we sign off here, Scott, one thing we've been saying since the beginning of the year is don't fight the trend. You can't fight the tape. But I think the theme that we saw in this morning call is everything is just kind of like a wait and see pattern. So what are you recommending to your traders for an overall market theme in terms of how to manage your positions, hedging and so forth? But when you're in wait and see mode, you, that's what you do. You kind of wait and see, you do less. You don't always have to push the buttons. You always don't have to be in tier two, tier three. You could actually look for more data to get confirmation, look for a better setup. And yesterday, you know, someone said it, it kind of feels like right now up here above 1400 was like musical chairs. Right. They keep switching the chairs around. So the last thing you want to do is be the trader caught when the music turns off because then they turn out the lights, which a lot of people, <clears throat> <laughs> That's a good song back there. <laughs> when the music's over, anyway, you don't want to be there when they do that. But a lot of people have been saying that, you know, for the past four months. So it doesn't mean game over, it just means pull back. So for me, I went to a little less longs, back to a tier one. I added some shorts in the queues, which I haven't had in a while because I figure I want to have some, you know, some cash flow to the downside and just keep doing that and have levels in front of you. The level in front of us now is that 10 day. If we don't take that back, then perhaps we test the prior breakout of like uh, 138.10, which is about. Uh, 1377. If we get there and leaders start acting okay and banks go green and stocks don't pull in too much, then that might be the correction the same way we had the shallow correction to 1340. But if we get there, measure it, things don't look good and the, the news flow out of China is still bad and you know Europe, the, the, the spreads start getting a little bit right, wider. Worse, right, wider. Right. You, know, you have to just measure it and navigate it and not have opinions, have a plan and wait for the market to confirm Okay, it. great. And we will turn to the charts like we always do every day with Scott and the team on Options Profits, Real Money, and T3Live.com. Thanks, everyone.